Morning guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. I'm out here in the Tonto National Forest uh, scouting a spot for field day uh, 2021. This will be my second field day. I'm about uh, 2.6 miles into this uh, trail run. Uh, I'm walking in the rocks right now. But uh, let's talk about my plan, or at least the tentative plan, for uh, field day 2021. And uh, in the comments below, uh, let me know what your plan is and what your X factor is going to be, uh, if you have one. So, in terms of radios, I'll be bringing two radios. Uh, first is the new Yaesu VX6R, the Tri-Bander. And uh, I want to try, uh, basically, FM on 440, 222, and of course, 2 meters. Shouldn't be a big deal. My other radio that I'll be bringing will be my Yaesu FT818, mostly due to size and weight. And I'll be running it with the TPA uh, pack frame in my standard bag configuration. Uh, in terms of power, I'll have one 4.5 amp hour Bioino battery uh, in the bag. And then I'll bring um, a second as a backup. And I kind of like having two smaller batteries for, um, uh, for failure scenarios rather than one larger, like my 12 amp hour battery. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, for power distribution, power management, uh, I'll be bringing the uh, Buddy Pole Power Mini, and that's actually inside the bag, and it will also provide uh, 12 volts for, or sorry, 5 volts for my Raspberry Pi 3B, because I will be doing digital. More on that in a second. And then uh, in terms of solar, I will be bringing my uh, PowerFilm 20 watt panels, and uh, it's been pretty good uh, on that radio. It keeps me pretty topped off. Uh, in terms of a mast, I'll be bringing the Soda Beams Carbon 6 Carbon Fiber Mast. That's a 19-foot uh, mast. And I believe it comes in at 17 inches collapsed. It's really nice. Uh, haven't decided on which wire antennas I'm going to be bringing, but I would like to operate HF on uh, 20 and 40 at a minimum, and possibly 80. Uh, so it'll likely be a couple of Pactena wire antennas. Uh, the NFED for sure and maybe the uh, link dipole. Still thinking about that one. Uh, I don't like deploying dipoles out in the field. Um, oh, and the Pactana truck mount for uh, single sideband work on two meters. And also uh, FM, I love that, uh, that little guy. It sits right on top of my trekking pole on my tarp shelter. So let's talk a bit about my X factor and that's the heat. Uh, last year when I did this, I started at 9 a.m. and by 1.30 I was done. 1.30 p.m. Uh, local time I was done. So this year, I think I'm gonna try a different technique and I'm gonna start hiking out on this journey starting at about 4 p.m. And I believe it's gonna be at least 110 degrees, if not more at that time. So I'll be bringing at least eight liters of water. And I'm usually pretty good about the hat, the uh, neck gaiter, um, I would like a Shemog, if you guys can recommend a good one, um, I'd love to get one. Plenty of sunscreen, eyewear, long sleeve shirt, gloves, so not too much of a, a big deal there. But once we get to uh, the camping spot, which will be on a ridge line, I hope, so that I'm higher up, I'll be bringing the uh, tarp shelter again that I stand up with my trekking poles. But this year, I think I want to try doing a two tier tarp shelter to cut the heat and have some cross ventilation going through it and see how that helps. And uh, to track the temperature, I found this morning a little USB pen style device that tracks temperature over time so that you can plot it. And it was designed for clinical uh, research in the pharmaceutical industry or uh, kind of that area. And uh, I like it because it claims to go up to 158 degrees Fahrenheit, which will be interesting. Um, oddly enough too, this uh, Yesu uh, VX6R has an inter internal temperature gauge too. And that was another reason why I bought it. I was kind of curious to see what type of operating maximums I can actually do out here in the field. Um, so yeah, that'll be the X factor is just the sun and heat. And then I will be primarily operating overnight. So a short window, so probably a uh, 14 hour operating window for this year. I don't know if I'm actually gonna contest, I may do it. But really the other thing I wanna do is uh, test more than anything my MCOM tools 
project and that's the uh, field expedient digital communications project that I'm working on uh, that allows me to do offline uh, work and primarily right now I'm using it to switch between uh, APRS uh, packet work Winlink packet work and over, over to Winlink RDOP work so it's a really nice way for me in a very headless fashion to change the mode of operation for my phone and then also do a lot of field expedient things so I'll be doing lots of APRS tests lots of Winlink tests and on that note if you guys want me to send you uh, updates, position reports, status information. Um, I won't send more than one or two, but uh, put your uh, if you have if you're a Winlink user, put your call sign down below, and I'll add you to the list for my reports. Um, if you're not a Winlink user, just uh, put down your call sign and uh, that you're on QRZ, and I'll look you up and I'll add you to the list of emails I send out because I think it'll be kind of fun to see if you guys get my position reports and just temperature and all that good stuff. Um, a couple of features I may want to add before then to the MCOM Tools project. Uh, Jason KM4ACK talked a bit about doing um, placing APRS objects to plot your field location. So since I have full JP GPS integrated, I will be doing that. I haven't decided if I want to do my offline call sign lookup feature. Uh, my background in search engineering is uh, a search engineer. I've been building search engines for decades so i'm thinking about doing a lightweight copy of the fcc database a light version with a subset of the data to be able to do real time um not real time but uh, call sign lookups in the field without internet access all right guys in terms of my backpacking gear that's going to be the most important part the radio gear is the smallest piece in terms of what i'm concerned so i'll be bringing the eberly stock fact track It'll be the first time I do a full loadout with gear to support me uh, for an overnight operation. So that'll be fun. Uh, I will actually have to use the hydration systems on that pack. I don't have enough water bottles to support eight to 10 liters of water. Um, so it'll be interesting to have a dual hydration system approach. Um, but yeah, that's basically it guys. If uh, I decide and find a spot up there, I'll show it to you. If not, I'm the tech prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared. All right, guys, so I think I found my spot. It's actually uh, just a bit further than uh, the spot that I was in. I think it was last weekend, and uh, I think I'll be up high enough. I'm gonna test out the old uh, two meter, 222, and 440 radio here in a bit, just to make sure that I'm good on FM. And uh, it's actually a pretty decent flat open area here so i've got plenty of room for the tent i've got plenty of room to run a dipole up that way if i want to or an end fed and if for some reason it turns out that i'm not high enough i think that's about a 20 minute trek to the top of that ridge line and then i could always come down here to make camp and we'll see what the critter situation is uh when i did winter field day in january um the coyotes were kind of like hovering around um i had a better protection from the elements last time but whatever point is uh field day 2021 is going to happen this year i was joking last time that i wouldn't do field day because i'm out in the field every weekend uh, either doing soda or just hanging out uh doing radio out here like i said if you want to be on the list of uh the recipient list either let me know your call sign and that you have a winlink accessibility or your call sign and that you have an email on qrz and i'll look you guys up and we'll have fun with uh exchanging some uh position reports and things of that nature all right guys i'm the tech prepper be strong be safe and be prepared m7 end this is kt1 run how's this oh better better kt1 run how's this copy copy good morning good morning hey